Karva Chauth is a one-day festival celebrated by Hindu women four days after Purnima a full moon in the month of Kartika. Dates differ according to the Gregorian calendar which is tabular and not based according to constellations. Karva Chauth, like many Hindu festivals, is based on the lunisolar calendar which accounts for all astronomical positions, especially positions of the moon which is used as a marker to calculate important dates. On Karva Chauth women, especially in northern India, who are married fast from sunrise to moonrise for the safety and longevity of their husbands. The Karva Chauth fast is traditionally celebrated in the states of Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Delhi and as Atla Tad in Andhra Pradesh. The festival falls on the fourth day after the full moon, in the Hindu lunisolar calendar month of Kartik. Historically, Karva Chauth was celebrated as a prayer for the long life of soldiers in the war, and by extension today refers to the long life of a married husband. Etymology <inaudible> 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 and origins Karva is another word for pot, a small earthen pot of water, and chauth means fourth in Hindi, a reference to the fact that the festival falls on the fourth day of the dark fortnight, or Krishna Pax, of the month of Kartik. The festival originated and came to be celebrated only in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. Karwa Chauth is celebrated in northern India. One hypothesis is that military campaigns were often conducted by men in far off places whereby men would often leave their wives and children to go off to war. Their wives would often pray for their safe return. The festival also coincides with the wheat sowing time i.e., the beginning of the Rabi crop cycle. Big earthen pots in which wheat is stored are sometimes called karvas, so the fast may have begun as a prayer for a good harvest in this predominantly wheat-eating region. Another story about the origin of this festival relates to the bond of feminine friendship. With the custom of arranged marriage being prevalent, the newlywed bride would reside with her husband and the in-laws. Everyone being a stranger to her, the custom arose of befriending another woman as her friend or sister for life. Their friendship would be sanctified through a Hindu ritual during the marriage ceremony itself. The bride's friend would usually be of the same age or slightly older, typically married into the same village so that she would not go away and not directly related to her in-laws so there was no conflict of interest later. This emotional and psychological bond would be considered akin to a blood relationship. It is said that Karva Chauth festival evolved to include celebrating this special bond of friendship. A few days before Karva Chauth, married women would buy new karvas spherical clay pots, 7 9 in diameter and 2 to 3 liters capacity and paint them on the outside with beautiful designs. Inside they would put bangles and ribbons, homemade candy and sweets, makeup items, and small clothes. The women would then visit each other on the day of Karva Chauth and exchange these karvas. <laughs> <laughs> Annual dates The following dates are based on the Hindu calendar. Rituals Women begin preparing for Karva Chauth a few days in advance, by buying adornments shringar, jewelry, and puja items, such as the Karva lamps, mathi, henna and the decorated puja tali plate. Local bazaars take on a festive look as shopkeepers put their Karva Chauth-related products on display. On the day of the fast, women from Punjab awake to eat and drink just before sunrise. In Uttar Pradesh, celebrants eat soot feni with milk and sugar on the eve of the festival. It is said that this helps them go without water the next day. In Punjab, sargi saragi is an important part of this pre-dawn meal and always includes phenia. It is traditional for the sargi to be sent or given to the fasting woman by her mother-in-law. If she lives with her mother-in-law, the pre-dawn meal is prepared by the mother-in-law. On Karwa Chauth occasion, fasting women choose to wear Karva Chauth special dresses like a traditional sari or lehenga to look their best. In some regions, women wear traditional dresses of their states. The fast begins at dawn. Fasting women do not eat during the day. In traditional observances of the fast, the fasting woman usually does no housework. Women apply henna and other cosmetics to themselves and each other. The day passes in meeting friends and relatives. 
In some regions, it is customary to give and exchange painted clay pots filled with put bangles, ribbons, homemade candy, cosmetics and small cloth items e handkerchiefs. Since Karva Chauth follows soon after the Karif crop harvest in the rural areas, it is a good time for community festivities and gift exchanges. Parents often send gifts to their married daughters and their children. In the evening, a community women-only ceremony is held. Participants dress in fine clothing and wear jewelry and henna, and in some regions dress in the complete finery of their wedding dresses. The dresses are frequently red, gold or orange, which are considered auspicious colors. In Uttar Pradesh, women wear saris or lehangas. The fasters sit in a circle with their puja talis. Depending on region and community, a version of the story of Karva Chauth is narrated, with regular pauses. The storyteller is usually an older woman or a priest, if one is present. In the pauses, the Karva Chauth Puja song is sung collectively the singers perform the ferris passing their talis around in the circle. The first six describe some of the activities that are taboo during the fast and the seventh describes the lifting of those restrictions with the conclusion of the fast. The forbidden activities include weaving cloth pleading with or attempting to please anyone and awakening anyone who is asleep For the first six fairies they sing For the seventh fairy, they sing In Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, participants exchange karvas seven times between themselves. In Rajasthan, before offering water seven times the fasting woman is asked, Dapi ki ni dapi? Are you satiated? To which she responds, Jal se dapi, suhag se na dapi. I am satiated by water, but not from love of my husband. An alternative ritual conducted by Uttar Pradeshis is prayer of Gaur Mata, the earth. Specifically, celebrants will take a bit of soil, sprinkle water, and then place kumkum on it, treating it as an idol, manifestation of the fertile Mother Earth. In Rajasthan, stories are told by older women in the family, including narratives of Karva Chauth, Shiv, Parvati and Ganesh. In earlier times, an idol of Gaur Mata was made using earth and cow dung, which has now been replaced with an idol of Parvati. Each fasting woman lights an earthen lamp in her tali while listening to the Karva story. Sindor, incense sticks and rice are also kept in the tali. In Uttar Pradesh, a priest or an elderly woman of the family narrates the story of Bijabeti or Virvati. Celebrants make Gauri, Ganesh and Shankar idols with mud and decorate them with colorful and bright clothes and jewelry. While exchanging karvas seven times, they sing Thereafter, the fasters offer baina a melange of goodies like halwa, puri, namkeen mathri, methi mathri, etc. to the idols mansana and hand over to their mother-in-law or sister-in-law. The Farah ceremony concluded, the women await the rising of the moon. Once the moon is visible, depending on the region and community, it is customary for a fasting woman, to view moon or its reflection in a vessel filled with water, through a sieve, or through the cloth of a dipada. Water is offered to the moon or Chandra, the lunar deity, to secure its blessings. In some regions, the woman says a brief prayer asking for her husband's life. It is believed that at this stage, spiritually strengthened by her fast, the woman can successfully confront and defeat death personified by Yama. In Rajasthan the women say, "...like the gold necklace and the pearl bracelet, just like the moon may my suhag always shine brightly." Her husband then takes the water from the tali and offers it to his wife, taking her first sip of water during the day, the fast is now broken and the woman can have a complete meal. Popular cultural aspects and critiques In modern North India and Northwestern India society, Karva Chauth is considered to be a romantic festival, symbolizing the love between a husband and wife. It has been celebrated in Bollywood movies such as Dilwale Dulhaniya La Jayange, where an unmarried woman signals her love for a man by keeping the fast for him and he reciprocates by secretly fasting as a gesture of empathy, as well as demonstrating his concern for her during the day and breaking her fast by feeding her at moonrise, and Bhagban, in which a man persuades his elderly fasting wife to break her fast over the telephone because they have been separated by their uncaring children. News coverage of celebrities sometimes highlights the keeping of the fast by an unmarried public figure because it indicates a strong and likely permanent romantic attachment. Similar to Valentine's Day, the lack of a romantic partner can acutely be felt by unattached women. 
The festival is used extensively in advertising campaigns in the region, for instance in a Chevrolet TV spot in which a man demonstrates his caring for his wife by buying a car with a sunroof so he can drive her around on Karva Choth night until she spots the moon through it. Thanks to the Bollywood, Karwa Choth isn't limited to be a North Indian or Punjabi festival anymore. It is now glamorized and widely popular function in India. Every married woman and a bride to be wants to look her best on this day when she fasts for the well being of her husband. The evening is the time when the drudgery of fast starts wearing off and the enthusiasm and expectation of golden moments show on their faces. Since Karva Choth is celebrated primarily by women, men are entirely excluded from the festival's observances until moonrise, though they are expected to demonstrate attention and concern for their fasting wives, and because beauty rituals and dressing up are a significant part of the day, the festival is seen as an event that bonds women together. In the present day, groups of unmarried women sometimes keep the fast out of a sense of friendship, though this practice is far from universal. This is especially true in the urban areas of North India and Northwestern India is interpreted as a prayer for a loving husband in the future. Another trend in the northern urban areas is the spreading of the festival's observance to women originating in communities and regions such as Maharashtra that have not traditionally celebrated Karva Chath or even been aware of the festival's existence. The same is true for Gujarat. Karwa Choth 2018 date the 27th of October. The festival has been criticized as being inherently sexist by some because there is no reciprocal fasting by males and called uplifting for women by others. There have been calls to modify or eliminate the festival by commentators who hold it to be anti-women and to perpetuate the notion of women's dependence on men. Karva Choth has been cited as a symbol of cultural repression of women by some Indian feminists, such as Madhu Kishwar who has put it in the same class as Komanivid, i.e., pushing women into position of subservience to their husbands, similar to the family structure allegedly favoured by Ayatollah Khomeini. Other feminists, however, have called the festival empowering for women because Karva Choth enables them to quit housework completely for the day and expect gifts from their husbands. Some writers have asserted that such rituals work insidiously to create an instrument of social control that oppresses women and that the even greater popularity of karva chath among urban educated participants raises the question of which is the greater barrier to women's liberation religion or the market topic <laughs> traditional tales There are legends associated with the Karva Choth festival. In some tellings, the tales are interlinked, with one acting as a frame story for another. The story of Queen Virvati A beautiful queen called Virvati was the only sister of seven loving brothers. She spent her first Karva Choth as a married woman at her parents' house. She began a strict fast after sunrise but, by evening, was desperately waiting for the moonrise as she suffered severe thirst and hunger. Her seven brothers couldn't bear to see their sister in such distress and created a mirror in a pipple tree that made it look as though the moon had risen. The sister mistook it for the moon and broke her fast. The moment she took the first morsel of food, she sneezed. In her second morsel she found hair. After the third she learned the news of her husband, the king, was dead. Heartbroken, she wept through the night until her Shakti compelled a goddess to appear and ask why she crying. When the queen explained her distress, the goddess revealed how she had been tricked by her brothers and instructed her to repeat the Karva Choth fast with complete devotion. When Virvati repeated the fast, Yama was forced to restore her husband to life. In a variant of this story, the brothers build a massive fire behind a mountain instead and trick their sister by convincing her that the glow is the moon. She breaks her fast and word arrives that her beloved husband has died. She immediately begins running to her husband's house, which is somewhat distant, and is intercepted by Shiva Parvati. Parvati reveals the trickery to her, cuts her own little finger to give the wife a few drops of her holy blood, and instructs her to be careful in keeping the complete fast in the future. The wife sprinkles Parvati's blood on her dead husband and, coming back to life, they are reunited. The legend of Mahabharata The belief in this fast and its associated rituals goes back to the pre-Mahabharata times. Draupadi, too, is said to have observed this fast. 
Once Arjun went to the Nilgiris for penance and the rest of the Pandavas faced many problems in his absence. Draupadi, out of desperation, remembered Lord Krishna and asked for help. Lord Krishna reminded her that on an earlier occasion, when goddess Parvati had sought Lord Shiva's guidance under similar circumstances, she had been advised to observe the fast of Karva Chauth. In some tellings of this legend, Shiva tells Parvati the story of Virvati to describe the Karva Chauth fast. Draupadi followed the instructions and observed the fast with all its rituals. Consequently, the Pandavas were able to overcome their problems. The legend of Karva A woman named Karva was deeply devoted to her husband. Her intense love and dedication towards him gave her Shakti spiritual power. While bathing at a river, her husband was caught by a crocodile. Karva bound the crocodile with a cotton yarn and asked Yama the god of death to send the crocodile to hell. Yama refused. Karva threatened to curse Yama and destroy him. Yama, afraid of being cursed by Padivrat devoted wife, sent the crocodile to hell and blessed Karva's husband with long life. Karva and her husband enjoyed many years of wedded bliss. To this day, Karva Chauth is celebrated with great faith and belief. The story of Sadavan and Savitri When Lord Yama came to procure Satyavan's soul, Savitri begged him to grant him life. When he refused, she stopped eating and drinking and followed Yama who carried away her dead husband. Yama said that she could ask for any other boon except for the life of her husband. Savitri asked that she be blessed with children. Yama agreed. Being a paddy vrat, devoted wife, Savitri would never let any other man be the father of her children. Yama was left with no other choice but to restore Savitri's husband to life. This story refers to a different Punima and not Karva Chauth. See also Viva Padavrata <laughs>